Good day, Tesla Universe. This is a joyous day here at EVTV. We have just concluded uh, last evening watching the Tesla Battery Day, which we've been waiting for and anticipating for a very long time, and we got to sit and enjoy it. What did you think, Danny? It, I think it was amazing. They, they put a lot of information in there, more than what I was expecting, so they're making great leaps. Yeah, they are, and that is uh, the theme of the show today, by the way, is it's all about the tab, <laughs> and uh, that's what I took away. I can just envision this interwoving of a very uh, dense battery that can hold a lot of energy, and that is a leap forward, uh, but it was a very enjoyable show. For those of you that are really into batteries, uh, and Jack, you know, was certainly into batteries, and I have sat through a multitude of his discussions, lectures, instructional videos, and I, I am very thankful that I did, because quite a bit of uh, what he talked about really sank in, and uh, we're going to talk more about that later in the show, but you have basically, uh, again, the classic double dip, <laughs> increased capacity, lower cost. That's really cool. Yes. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about manufacturing, which was in the first part of the analysis. So those of you that are into Tesla stock, you need to kind of understand what uh, they're talking about, which is uh, the first company in 100 years to uh, maintain you know, a very efficient profitability during a launch. And I'll try to give you uh, some analogies. I've, uh, just so you know, I ran a manufacturing plant for about 15 years. And uh, I certainly understand how they're explaining these numbers. Uh, in a simple terms, you're making cakes. And you have to buy 50 pounds of flour, 10 pounds of butter, 10 pounds of uh, sugar, whatever. But what happens is, as you go to make the purchases to gain price efficiencies, they say, well, we really don't sell it in 50 pounds. We sell it in 80 pounds, and we don't sell just 10 pounds of butter. We sell 100 pounds of butter. So mm -hmm. as you get through your manufacturing process at the first cycle, you have leftover parts of, say, 10 pounds of flour, 4 pounds of butter, and then you have to rebuy to even out your measuring cups, to, met, to, to, to match all that up. And when you get it all matched up, that's when you actually make profit as far as netting cash. So the goal of manufacturing is sell 100 cakes, bake 100 cakes, and buy the, met, the, the ingredients for 100 cakes. Yep. The real world doesn't normally work like that until you get to this Tesla scenario. They basically bought all the parts for the cars sold all the parts for the cars, and they made all the parts for the car in the same time period. So mm -hmm. it's not a paper profit. It's not saying, well, you know, the leftover parts were held in inventory, so if you factor all these accounting numbers together, we showed a profit. If you do all the, the accounting numbers correctly, you bake 100, you sell 100, you make 100, or, what, or they buy 100, you get the $15 profit in your pocket. And that's something that in manufacturing is very difficult. As a matter of fact, as I operate a manufacturing plant, that's really what you spend the majority of your time doing, <laughs> is trying to create uh, a balance of numbers, basically. And that's what management does. And they, uh, in doing so, uh, that's a pretty neat little trick to pull off on that complex of an operation. That is no small feat. Now, you know, uh, they all alluded to uh, how much massive human capital it took, and it does. It takes somebody yeah. focused like crazy on uh, a whole lot of numbers to, to make that happen. So mm -hmm. my hat's off to you, Elon. <laughs> that was a, uh, a wonderful feat in itself, and I think, I hope that didn't slip by the public, but to be able to do that, uh, with tens of thousands of people and a gajillion parts and a world watching you under a microscope is a pretty good situation. Now, the second thing I talk about manufacturing, mm -hmm. the dry process, which they spent a lot of time on that. But I had, uh, in, my, in, my, in our plant, we did have a, a coating process and we had a 
what would be akin to what a spray booth is in, in, in a paint shop. I had to manage all that. And you have a, a couple little letters that I'll bring up that maybe the public will know. One is called VOC, and the other one is called EPA. <laughs> so when you have a wet process that is emitting chemicals, they are called volatile organic chemicals. And when you emit volatile organic chemicals, you have to report to the Environmental Protection Agency. <laughs> so you have insurance, you have people to deal with, masks, breathing apparatus, filters that have to be changed. All of that stuff in a wet process is ginormous. It is just a pain in the ass. In addition, you have a little guy that shows up with a little badge and just checking things and air quality and all those kind of stuff. So um, uh, that is certainly something that they have dealt with and um, uh, we now don't have to do with that. And that's the dry process is a wonderful uh, advantage. It is a technology advantage as well as a potentially a future uh, hassle that they don't have to deal with. And I think not just in the cell, they actually went for a drier process, I think, in getting the materials itself. Like the lithium, they showed that graph going from so much water, so much solvent, and then the big process to getting the final lithium by the product. And now they are planning on reducing those steps going mm -hmm. down. And I think that's really cool. Like instead of being fixed with what the normal process is, they actually went back to the supplier to figure out how they can reduce the amount of water, how they can reduce the solvents, the sulfates they were talking about, and they basically mm -hmm. want to make it as easy as possible to go from this step to the next step. And I think they're doing, a, they're planning out a really marvelous job there. And that is, again, from a potential investor standpoint, that is a, uh that's a big deal. All, all those things are a big deal. The uh, very efficient uh, launch and manufacturing gain, where they actually produce the net profit uh, right off the bat and uh, reprocess. Let's take a look at uh, Danu and uh, what he had as his analysis of the uh, Tesla battery day. So here we are with the Model 3 batteries in our shop. Uh, we have two and a third one over there, but we're trying to get just the two in the frame. Uh, talking about the cells now, we have the Model 3 cell jelly roll over here, the Model S jelly roll over here, and to compare, these are the actual cells from the cars, and this is the 18650. You can see how small it is compared to the 2170, and these are basically the internals of these two cells. And going from the Model 3, 2170, I have this piece of ABS plastic, 4680 dimension. This is what I could come up with since they came out with this dimension yesterday. Um, so this basically is twice the size of the 2170. And I can hold it out there. I don't know if you can see this clearly. But this basically will have five times the power and, sorry, six times the power five times the energy and about 16% more uh, range. So comparing that to this, you can see how much of a bigger can this is going to be just by the diameter and by the height itself too. So kind of to explain what the jelly roll would look like, we found this piece of heat shrink. This is 81 millimeters tall. So just one millimeter taller than what our plastic was. But so, like I said, with the diameter going twice what it was before, you can fit a lot more jelly roll in there. Now, I'm not sure about the exact dimension, but I would think at least twice as much. And you can see how much this is going to be filling in compared to the Model 3 2170. Now, again, the exact length would be based on the thickness of the jelly roll and the dry coating process, they can increase or decrease the thickness. And like the thinnest, they could go up to four times this length. Or if they use thicker material, they would go at least twice this length, I would think. 
but we should soon have a cell in here and we'll take it apart for you. But this is kind of to explain how much more space, surface area they're gonna have with the new 4680. Now, talking about the tabless uh, setup, I think it's actually a lot of tabs, but they call it tabless. So if you see over here, we have the tab on the 2170 and another tab also on the other side of the jelly roll. So this is an anode and a cathode. This is just going to be layered together and rolled up to all together. So what we have right now is the current goes in from the tab and then spreads to the whole surface area. And the same for the cathode and the anode. One area and spreads all over. <coughs> Going into multiple tabs, that's just a lot all along the way. And they just fold it onto, next, next, uh, onto each other until they go all the way to the middle again. And honestly, I think this is an amazing design. I don't know why they didn't do this before. So now, with many tabs, you have all this entryways for the current to flow into the surface area. And that's the same for the cathode too. And what this also means is, if you were to look at it, like what Richard would explain is having one door into a big room is currently what their design is. The one tab going into a big room. But with their tabless or many tab design, they're just having many doors going into one room. So there you can have more current flow, less thermal uh, waste and thermal expansion even because of the extra heat. So having more doors is definitely a significant improvement going from the tab, one tab, to many tab or tabless design. So moving from that to the structure of the Model 3 battery, we, we have these two new Model 3 batteries and we have the four modules inside it. So they had to have packaging around the cell and then packaging around the modules itself. So going into their new design where the cells are in the middle and then they'll basically have an exoskeleton around it, that is the bottom of the car. So what we're going to be doing, what they're doing is basically reducing the number of parts and reducing the number of time it would take to build it because they would just have the bottom of the car already built. So I think it's a great improvement and structural wise and also having the weight to the center, it's just gonna be more fun to drive. Um, but yeah, structural strength is going to be significantly improved and let's see what Richard has to talk about this. Let's go back to the room. Well, uh, thank you, Danny, for that perspective on yep. the proportionality of the new battery. And uh, the light bulb that went off in my mind uh, originally was something like the analogy of the SD card. You had a SD card at four gigabytes that cost so mm -hmm. much to produce, and you literally went to an SD card at 32 gigabytes, and not only did it increase the memory, it was cheaper to make than the, the, the four gigabyte. And that's somewhat uh, where uh, my breakdown of this battery came to was that in a way you're double dipping. Not only are you increasing the capacity, you are lowering the cost of the unit uh, at the same time. That is a pretty classic uh, manufacturing technique. Uh, uh, it's, you know, Apple did it, uh, all sorts of people have done it over the years. Uh, Tesla didn't invent that. Uh, hmm. It's a very smart play, uh, and it is uh, uh, a great thing to hear with batteries, but uh, that is not actually a particularly new manufacturing uh, technique uh, that comes up with, but they've done it and done it brilliantly, and uh, we're certainly in support of that. I did want to talk a little bit about structurally integrated panels. Uh, this is a very similar uh, um, piece of for display here. It has a very thin sheet on top and a very thin sheet on the bottom and it has somewhat of a honeycomb in the center and it just makes yep. an extremely stout surface, a very stiff surface. And, and that's all aluminum? This is all aluminum. Yep, it's and thin, yeah. It's very thin, it's recyclable, as well as I, I'm sure the cast endings are, they're recyclable also. So not only uh, that, but, but, you know, what you alluded to and what I'd always say is that they took, you actually would build a battery, you would build the encasement, you would do all of this work, and then you would ship that to the factory, and then they have to mount it 
to a framing structure uh, to put the car together. And this step, they're going to put the battery together, and it's the car. And then they ship that, and then you put that, the wheels on each end of it, and you basically have a platform of a car. And that's what they were talking about in all these uh, form factor and the gains and all that. The form becomes the car, and it also cuts out steps later on in the manufacturing process. Very brilliant play. How soon it all comes into play is, is another thing. They, they, they did say 10 years. I would say it's a card that's on the table, probably um, somewhat of a defensive measure against their competitors. Hey, this, we got it. And if you uh, uh, come after us, we're going to we'll ramp this up. But, uh, yeah, that is the way to do it. An entirely recyclable, nearly entirely recyclable car, uh, a pre-made structure framing platform with a battery in it, boom. Yep. That's the way it works. So, uh, yeah. okay. Well, Daniel, that's about another show. Yep. And uh, it's all, boy, I tell you, uh, just to let you know, when that uh, battery day came together and everybody was waiting on it, <laughs> we were in the luckiest spot in the world. I'm telling you, uh, I knew everything that they were talking about, and, boy, it clicked very quickly. Uh, they uh, made their gains by, I, I think it's the weave of the tab. Yeah. They are getting uh, more energy into a smaller space. And it costs less. Cost a less buck. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's something that uh, is glorious to see. But right now we're still in the Model 3 world and in the Model S world. There's still uh, plenty of room for that to continue growing. Um, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. and uh, it, It'll definitely take a while for them to come up with the battery. I mean, it took them a while to actually come up with battery day, even though uh, they I were think planning. they're <laughs> just playing the harmonica. They're teasing. They definitely. were baffling their competition in some ways. That uh, uh, it never really, there never really was an exact factor of a number you could sort of make yeah. a determination about. But uh, that's having fun with it. Elon, that's what you're supposed to be doing, having fun <laughs> with it in between little baby bottle feedings, I guess. So, uh, uh, but anyhow, that's it for EVTV, and we're going to see you back next time. We've got more stuff coming. We've got some new builds, new products, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned to EVTV.